Good afternoon and welcome to today's class, which is the Windsor Newton Northern Lights. My name is Tim DePack and I will, I'm from Windsor Newton. I'll be your moderator for today's class. I'm being joined by Nikki Tracos from Life Eye Design, who will be your artist instructor for today's class. Nikki will be taking you through today's class by providing information about the products being used and showing you how to perform some of her favorite watercolor painting techniques, all while creating these beautiful dancing waves of light of the Aurora Borealis, using the Windsor Newton Professional Watercolor Paints along with the Windsor Newton Professional Synthetic Watercolor Brushes. There was an inspirational image that was provided to you in the email. If you, those of you that missed it, we'll provide the link for you in the chat on the side. Upon the completion of this class, you'll be sent a survey in your email. Please let us know what you thought about the class, how we did, and if there's any particular topics you'd like to see Nikki perform in future classes. As Felicia had mentioned, the class is being recorded and the replay will be available 24 to 48 hours on the michaels.com and the Michaels YouTube channel. Please feel free to follow along and paint with Nikki or sit back, relax, and enjoy the class. And with that, I'd like to pass it over to Nikki. Hi everyone, happy new year. It's so great to be back painting. We were chatting before we went live with Tim and Felicia saying it's been a few months since we've been together. So thank you as always to Windsor Newton for creating this opportunity for us to paint and Michaels for hosting this amazing opportunity for us to be painting together. Um, if you haven't painted with me before, welcome. If you are returning, thank you for coming back. I'll just quickly let you know a little bit more about who I am. Um, I live just north of Toronto. I am a self-taught artist who loves watercolor painting and feel like my approach to painting is a little bit more um, loose and comfortable. So I want everyone just to relax today and have fun painting along with me as we create this beautiful Aurora Borealis uh, Northern Light Sky. It will go a little bit quicker maybe than what some of you are used to. As Tim and Felicia said, there will be a recording. So if you can't keep up, please don't worry. Um, really just sit back and enjoy the process so that you can watch the replay and paint along with me and be able to pause anytime you want. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about supplies before we get started and even show you my approach to how I worked out some ideas for today's painting. So this is the final that I'll have in front of me as my inspiration piece. But when I painted this Aurora Borealis seascape, or sorry, night scene, um, it came out a few different ways when I was playing around with how to do it. So I wanted to show you this to let you know that your piece may look completely different from mine, and that's okay. I want you to just go with the wet on wet painting flow and really enjoy watching all the colors and everything mixed together as we begin. Okay, so first off, I'm using the Windsor Newton Professional Watercolor Block. It is cold press, 140 pounds, 100% cotton. This paper allows me to get really nice and wet. I cut down my sheets. I'm gonna show you up close. There's a tiny bit of texture, but I cut down my sheet because we're painting in an hour. I want us to be able to get through the entire painting. Uh, working on cotton paper allows us to, two things, really use a lot of water because we'll be painting wet on wet, and also the vibrancy, like the colors just pop when you work on cotton paper. If you're feeling like you're, when your painting dries, that your painting looks a little bit muted and maybe lacking the life or the vibrancy that you want, Try uh, working with this professional watercolor, 100% cotton paper, it will make a difference, okay? So I've cut my sheet down, like I said, and I just used some painter's tape. It's for delicate surfaces. Michaels has a great selection of tape that you can look for. And I've taped my sheet because we are using a lot of water just on the back of a cardboard block from um, a watercolor pad. You can use um, maybe a board or write directly on your desk. I like to be able to move my sheet around as I'm painting. So that's why I like to paint, um, place it on the board. Next up, I'm gonna to talk to you about brushes. So I've chosen two brushes actually are in your notes. So a number 10 and a number four in the Windsor Newton Professional watercolor line. These are synthetic, um, they are round. What I love about them is they pick up a ton of water. I still have a really nice fine point, but it, the bristles allow me to really get a lot of water on my paper, a lot of water in my palette so that we can create again that beautiful sky. 
I also today when I was setting up, I picked up my number 12. I'm not sure if I'll use it or not, but if you don't have these exact sizes, try to use your largest fluffy Winsor Newton professional brush. And also we need a thin fine brush for when we paint in the trees, okay? So really important for the amount of water that these brushes pick up. So next up, I have this ceramic palette. And again, Michaels offers these really great ceramic palettes. I like to paint on ceramic versus plastic. Um, and this is where we'll be doing some, some color mixing. I've chosen some great colors right out of the two because again, working with Windsor Newton's professional line of paints, the colors are very vibrant. And I actually even have a new paint that we haven't used yet before. It's an aqua green that I love, but I'll go through the colors. So the Windsor Newton Professional Series will offer you that vibrancy, that beautiful, really easily, that beautiful um, payoff with the pigment that I find again, I reach to again and again because I want my paintings to last and I want them to be really vibrant and bold. So again, really high quality pigment. I don't need a lot in my palette. As you can see, there's just a little pea size amount. I dispensed them earlier and I just added a bit of water to them to get them ready for us to paint with. But the colors I'm using is Windsor Yellow, Permanent Rose, Sap Green, and this Aqua Green. I can't wait to show it to you. It is gorgeous. Aqua Green, and as you know, if you've painted with me before, paints gray. It is a staple in my painting kit. Actually, these colors, uh, apart from the aqua green, are colors that I always have in my painting kit. You can mix a ton of colors just using those alone. We'll be adding a little bit of stars, or even if you want to imagine it as being snow, using the Windsor Newton ink. So again, we'll just flicker a little bit at the end. I really love that this is opaque, so it's a really great white. Um, nice and loose, so I can flick it and I actually even use it for uh, lettering, which is kind of cool. So if you're painting along with us, just want to remind you to go ahead and tag us. We want to see what you're painting. And I always love to share um, work from students as they've taken classes with me. So it's at Life by Design, at Windsor & Newton, at Michael's Stores, and also use some of our favorite hashtags. I think Tim will put those in the chat for you if you uh, want to remember that. Okay, so I think I've gone over everything. Oh, a dryer. I'm going to use a dryer to speed up the process of drying. If you're painting this at home on your own, go ahead and leave it to dry naturally, but we'll speed up the process. I have paper towel and tissue handy only because it's going to get really wet and I want to be able to pull out some highlights. So that is close by my jars of water and just a pencil for us to get started so that um, I can pencil in, which I've already done already. It's very faint, but it's for my purposes. It's just a very light guide to remind me to bring my lightest shades right down to the bottom. I want that glow of the Northern Lights to peek through the trees because that contrast is really beautiful, okay? So if you haven't taped down your page yet, go ahead to get started. Go ahead and dispense your colors. Go ahead and also pencil in your line. And we are going to use our biggest brush. So I think I am gonna grab my number 12. We're going to use our biggest brush. And what we want is a really nice wet surface. Okay, so using my large brush, I'm just holding it on its side and making sure that the surface of my paper is really nice and glossy. So this may take, depending on your climate, I have indoor heating right now since we're in the middle of winter, so it's quite dry in here. Depending on your climate, you might want to apply two layers of this water to begin with. And again, working on cotton paper, it can take the water load that we're applying. So I am going to be very generous as we work wet and wet to paint the sky. And while we're doing this, I'll just chat with you as you're prepping your page. I want to paint light to dark and allow an opportunity for the paint to mix together, to blend together wet on wet. So I will start with my yellow. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna show you the gloss that I have on my, so you can see that there's the studio light. So you want it to be really nice and wet. If you don't have enough water, you won't get that, um, mixing and blending that you see in the sky, okay? 
let's get started. This this might go a little bit fast, like I said, for some of you, but working wet on wet, we really want an opportunity for the colors to mix. Nikki, just a quick question. The line that you drew on the bottom, how far up were you from the bottom of the paper? I'd say half an inch. Half an inch, okay. Yeah, about half an inch. Yeah, and interrupt me please anytime, Tim, with questions as we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the yellow. And really what I want to do is have the lights come out um, and almost feel like they're drawing in from the center to create a really nice focal point. And I'm even gonna bring it down all the way. So I haven't wet the bottom of my page, which allows me to make sure it dries a little bit more quickly. I will go ahead and add a bit more water to my brush. Again, working wet on wet, I really want this area to be wet before I bring in the permanent rose. Okay, so that's our first color down, which again, already look at how beautiful and bold that is. So because we have a lot of water on our paper, our puddles of paint should be more pigment than water. So I'd say 80% pigment and 20% um, water, okay? We'll add a little bit of this permanent rose just next to the yellow and watch it start to bleed together. I'm gonna to hold it up so you can see how just really nice wet on wet it's working. So I'll wipe off my brush or rinse off my brush here. And I can even move it around. So if I want to encourage the pink and the yellow to blend together. I can do that quite easily. And if you're finding that maybe you're not enjoying how they're mixing together, if you're getting a lot of water puddles, go ahead and take your tissue. You can pull back. So if I pick up some of that color with my tissue and a clean brush, I can go back in and control that flow. So remember, while your paint is wet, you are still in control at this point. And every time I've painted this, it's turned out differently. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to paint the sky again and again and have fun with it. So I'm going to go in a little bit with my sap green and think about color theory here. So I don't want my sap green and my permanent rose to mix together because it will turn a little bit muddy. But what I'm going to do is start to add it next to that yellow. And because I have studio lights, I can see my paper is drying a tiny bit but I'm not concerned. I can go in and add a little bit more water to it. Might even add some of that green. I know I said, don't bring it close to the permanent rose, but if I feel like the color is not mixing the way I'd like, I can just go ahead and again, just dab it off. So you can see even how interesting that is starting to look. And to create those rays, Easy way to do that is to make sure your brush is really nice and wet and clean. And you can even just pull out, go ahead and rinse it off again. Even just pull out these rays to create some expressive lines. Should I go in a little bit closer? Let's do that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see that a bit better. There we go. Perfect. So again, I can go in with a bit more of this green, just because it is on the lighter side. And have it start to move upwards. So again, if you feel like your page isn't wet enough, clean off your brush, go ahead and dip it into clean water and re-wet it. And if you get blooms, because your paint is almost drying, and you're adding in clean water, allow the blooms to happen because that's where, and I'll show you an example of the blooms, that's where again, you get some really nice, interesting color mixing. Okay, I think I'll add a tiny bit more of this permanent rose here. Just again, wet on wet. Allowing it to dry. Bit more yellow too. As it's drying, I can strengthen some of those yellow beans. And then time to bring in this aqua green, which I just did it to show you. 
Okay. Look at the vibrancy of that color. So I have a lot of aqua green mixed up. And if you wanted to swatch your colors, oh, okay. let's see if I have a piece of paper handy. You can go ahead and get a scrap piece of paper. Look at the vibrancy of that color. Ooh, I'm excited to put it down. Use a scrap piece of paper so you can go ahead and swatch it. But this is where I feel like everything starts to really come together. So we want to darken the top of the sky. We really want to make it a nice contrast. I can even bring this aqua green in a little bit to bring in that personality. So I'm using a lot of water as you can see, because I can always go back in if I want to deepen parts of my painting. And at the top of the sky is where we'll add more of the Payne's gray and it will be um, very dark. This is uh, as Nikki's doing that. It's really important the paper that you're using for this as well. So it's the 140 pound, it's a heavyweight paper that's on there. So it's allowing that that paper and the, the water not to absorb right away, but it's gonna give mm -hmm. a nice absorption as it dries. And you can see how much water I have pooling. So there's a ton of water on this piece, starting to mix in the um, aqua green with the permanent rose. And I'm getting that really nice transition of um, a violet hue, which I think is beautiful as we start to deepen our sky. And I really want it to frame the sky. I'm thinking as the, again, the reflection starts to fade, it's darker on the outer edges. So I'm going to add a bit more because I really love this color. And definitely one to add to your kit if um, you don't have this aqua green. I played around a little bit with it and it's just beautiful. Okay, so I'm looking at my piece now and I see I have a little bit of a highlight there. I think I might even bring in some yellow. Again, and look for references as you're painting these skies. They're all so unique and different. And perhaps you've even been able to see the Aurora Borealis if you're lucky. There's some green also that I'm going to start adding just again to add a bit more vibrancy. So there are different degrees of wetness now on the page. So remember, you can always go back, maybe add some clean water. I have a jar of clean water here and allow some blooms to happen. That will look really cool. And I'm going to add a bit of green here because it does a feel, it does feel a little bit light. So as I hold it up, so you can see just in here as there's a bit of a violet mix, Again, the blooms are starting to happen. That's really when everything dries, <clears throat> excuse me, is when um, the personality of the watercolor really starts to shine. So again, take a minute, look at your piece, see where you want to add a bit more contrast. You can even come in a little bit to create some rays. And if you're feeling like you want to pull back a bit, remember, clean off your brush and just start to blend them away a slight bit. Here I have a bit of water. So with these professional brushes, because they absorb so much water, they hold so much water, sometimes I just use the brush itself to pull back, which is neat. Again, just pulling up some of that water there because I think I'm ready to add a bit of Payne's Gray. So again, you can see how really cool that blend is together. It looks so different than um, what I originally painted, which is, again, the amazing experience of just letting the watercolor flow and bleed. I really like that purple, so I'll go ahead and mix the permanent rose together. And at this point, too, turn your paper if you want to paint a bit more comfortably. I don't want to get you dizzy, so I'm going to try to paint moving my hand. But always make sure that you're comfortable as you're painting. Okay. It almost looks like an explosion there to me. I'm going to go ahead and add a bit more water and bring in 
tiny bit more of that yellow. And maybe even a tiny bit of green. There we go. How's everyone doing? Maybe let us know in the chat. Tim can keep an eye out. Here, I just wanna soften this line because I'm ready to add a bit of Payne's Gray. So again, yours may look completely different. Looking at the piece and my examples that I painted earlier, it's so different as well. I'm excited by that. I'm ready to put in the really nice dark Payne's Gray that's going to help to frame and add contrast to our sky. So Payne's Gray feels a little bit, a little bit sticky. So I'm just adding a bit more water, making sure that I have a nice flow to my petal mix here. And then go right into the top of this piece. Starting to encourage it. You can even hold it up. So if you want it to flow down a slight bit, just tilt it ever so slightly. And let it come in and frame. I might even switch my brush at this point. So I was painting with my 12. I'm going to go to my number 10, just because it is a slight bit smaller and I have a nice point where I can start to blend in and bring that nice dark into the sky. I need a little bit more of that aqua green, put it next to, oh, look at that ghost. I'm gonna go in a little bit closer. So because I'm using the aqua green right next to that Payne's gray, you can see it wet on wet traveling together and mixing really beautifully. Even bring it down in here. We'll be using Payne's Gray to paint in our tree, so I don't want it to be too dark at the bottom. I want it to be really nice and light, but it's okay to have a little bit of that sky peeking through. Hey, I think I might be ready to put the hair dryer to it. See how it looks. So I'm just looking, I'm looking at the overall um, dark spots and making sure that it doesn't look too structured. Again, at this point, I would even hold my piece away from me a little bit um, to get a better view from a distance to see if I need to add anything to it. I'm just sort of using my um, computer screen actually. So I'm watching along to see what you're seeing as well which then helps me decide if I have enough interest. I feel like I do maybe in the center here as it's starting to dry. I feel like I can add an, again, a little bit more yellow to strengthen this section here. And even maybe let it blend into the sky and see what happens. So yellow mixed with that aqua green will give me a really nice um, green actually, just in here. Go ahead and add a bit more green. The vibrancy is nice. I'm glad I decided to add a bit more green to this. And you know what I might even do in the center here? Let's mix some of that green with a little bit of the aqua. Oh, and you can see how that changes it. So I just mix some sap green. I'm gonna point it to the light, hopefully that will help. A bit of sap green mixed in with a bit of that aqua green. And look at this bright, it almost reminds me maybe of a hooker's green. Let's add that in spots too and see what happens. Ooh, and even how this is drying. So again, the beauty of painting these skies is really just have fun. Let the colors mix and bleed together. Let the blooms happen because when your piece is dry, that's where the personality really comes to life. So at this point, if you wanted to take a clean tissue um, and pull away some highlights, 
I recommend you do that now before we start drawing. So I just, again, want to pull out some areas of interest. You can use your brush to do this if you like, or a tissue. And again, that just adds a nice contrast of highlight um, before we put in our treats. So go ahead and use my clean brush and just create these really nice rays. Okay. That I think is where I'm going to stop. Again, it looks so different. It's awesome. Um, here is how wet my piece is. I'm going to turn on the dryer to get at least this portion of my painting dry. So I'm going to focus on that portion so I can go ahead and put in my trees. If you're still working on your sky, um, go ahead and continue. The trees as I go, you can catch up at any point to show you my technique for putting in these really nice dark trees. Okay, so I'm going to put my dryer on for a few minutes. Okay, as it's drying, we're making artistic decisions as we go. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of that sap green mixed in with a tiny bit of the yellow and add in even a little bit more of this as it's drying. So because I added quite a bit of water to the page and on my brush, um, it has dried a little bit lighter than I would like. So I'm just going to go ahead and can be wet everything. Again, working on cotton paper, I can dry and wet it again, dry and wet it again as much as I want. I can even add in some of this permanent rose too. Especially since we have time. We've got lots of time actually, that's great because normally we run out of time. And just working in that section, I think I'm going to add a little bit more of this. Now that I've got some nice wet strokes here, I'm going to add in a little bit more of that beautiful aqua green. And I even love what's happening here with that pink, so I can strengthen that if I choose as well. even blend it in. Blooms, let the blooms happen. Okay, again, taking one more look. I think I'll add a little bit more of that yellow, letting them blend together and bleed. So in here, my pink, mixed in a slight bit with my green. So just go ahead and add a little bit more, I think of it, because I really like that contrast. So dispensing a tiny bit more of the permanent rose, I keep calling it pink, but it's permanent rose. Clean brush. Let me flip my so you can see that. Permanent rose mix there. Ooh, nice. And again, if you feel like, oh, that's really heavy, again, they're super pigmented paints right out of the tube, just go ahead and add a bit of water to it. Again, I'm getting close to the green. So I'm just going to, maybe I'll use my brush actually to soak it up. Just going to encourage it to not blend together because it's nice if they stay side by side. Oh, I just got my finger in there. But I don't want them to blend together. But I will add some water so it blends up this way. Okay. 
Okay. Make sure we get our streaks happening still. I'm just using my brush to wipe away again to create those streaks. A little bit more of the aqua. Come in there. Okay, so now just go ahead and soften again using a bit of water. Soften and blend. Perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and dry again. Oh, I just spotted this area here that I want to soften. Perfect. I'll go ahead and put on the dry one again. Okay, that lower part, got my hand in paint, that lower part feels nice and dry. Uh, it's probably a little bit damper than I would like, but I want to go ahead and start putting in the trees, and then we can um, wait for this part to dry to put in our stars, which would be awesome. So flip down my palette. So we're using Payne's Gray, and I want a really nice opaque mix of Payne's Gray. So Start with maybe again 80% paint. There we go. See how nice and opaque that is. Oh, and even look at how this aqua green is drying. So really nice and opaque. I'm using my number four brush. I'll have this next to me in case I need it. So the number four brush will allow me to put down some nice tree lines. And what I want you to do when you're putting in your trees, you can paint in as many trees as you like. I want you to change the size of the tree. So make sure you have some nice big bold ones. So I want the tree to actually go really nice and tall. So I'm just going to paint in the trunks. And I want, again, one right next to, nice two big ones next to one another. And I like the contrast of the Payne's Gray next to the brighter, lighter colors too, which we're going to really play off of one another. So we'll put another one here and just eyeball it. You can, again, paint in as many trees as you like. So maybe a taller one here would be nice. I'm looking at my painted reference to see what I did earlier. Um, but again, I want to play around. So my piece isn't fully dry, so it's starting to um, blend into the sky. That's okay. I actually don't mind that. I think it'll give it nice personality. So you want to make sure if you paint this again, that your piece is fully dry so that um, you don't have that wet on wet blend happening. So you can see that I changed the size of the trees, just the length. I'll go ahead and place in a few more shorter ones here because they will be off at the distance. And you can always add more trees, less trees. I'll go ahead and put one, you will even put two right beside there. So it's like using a pencil to draw in your trees. That's our pencil guide for where we want our trees to go. And these evergreens, so really we're just painting the silhouette of the evergreen. So we want our strokes to be, I'm holding my brush sort of at a 90 degree angle. We want our strokes to be um, a little bit loose, have some personality. I want the sky to show through. And imagine these are the tops of the trees. So they're going to be a little bit more open so you can see the sky behind them. And then evergreens tend to get a little bit fuller and heavier as you get to the bottom. And don't forget to go ahead and put some strokes at the center of your tree as well, because the tree really um, is growing branches at all different angles. So 
you want to make sure that you mimic that. And it's just short strokes back and forth. I'm gonna get in even a little bit closer so you can see that. So again, here it's starting to blend together and that's okay as it starts to dry, I can even go back and touch it up a slight bit. But what you do want to make sure is that you go right to your tape line. Okay, so really nice and bold at your tape line. And again, using my number four brush gives me the opportunity to paint thin strokes with less pressure. So I'm applying less pressure, but as I push down, I can create these really nice thick bold strokes. And this is like the meditative part of your painting. Not, you don't have to worry too much about blending. As the sky is drying, it's starting to look really neat, but it's just creating some nice, even short strokes, go back. And if you want to paint a fuller tree, again, have less of the background showing through. And I like to start off um, allowing myself room because I can always go back in if I feel like this looks sparse. I can always go back in and add a few more strokes, but if I start off heavy, I can't remove. So as you start to fill in your, oh, I got a little bit too much paint there. As you start to fill in your forest, you can decide if you want a bit more um, volume to your trees or not. This one, I want it to be really nice and full. And again, remember, go right to the base. We don't want any um, color to show through at the bottom because we want it to look like it is a nice, um, dense forest that we're looking through. Any questions while I'm doing this part? I'm happy to answer as we're painting. And remember, vary the size. So this one is just off at the distance. I'm going to add another one here just because when we do the paint, the tape pull, I want to make sure that I have a nice, bold um, forest at the bottom. And I'm right-handed. So going to the left side, I'm just gonna make sure that I don't put my hand in the wet trees. So keep that in mind if you want to paint left to right. Um, that's a good idea. But again, just trying to change your brush stroke so that your um, branches don't look identical with each brush stroke. Just adding a bit more water to my petal here. And I'm not even wiping off my brush. I really want that Payne's Gray to be beautiful and strong. And as we're painting the trees, you can see, oh, it's gotten really blendy. That's okay. I don't mind. But you can see the contrast again between the Payne's Gray and the sky. Wait until we put in our splatters. That's the best part. So again, at the base, make sure it's really nice and full. You can even mimic another tree back here, starting to fill in that forest. And I like to kind of make the tree a little bit sparser at the top. Okay, coming along. And again, I love that yellow peeking through, so I want to leave a bit of space for that color to come through there. And you can start even overlapping. So this tree will overlap with the first one that we painted. And especially now that it's starting to dry, they can start to overlap. So I think I'll pop one in right here. So that I can overlap here. And again, make it look like we have a nice dense forest that we're looking through. Oh, it's starting to come together. 
So this little one, I will make it a bit taller. I even feel like we can put one in here. So the Payne's gray again in that first tree is really starting to dry so I can layer another tree. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see closer actually. So I'm just starting to layer in even a darker tree there. And I think even in that space, I'll paint in one right here. And again, from a distance that creates really nice um, deep value. It gives the eye something to look at and rest. And in here, I love the bright yellow. So I don't want to paint in a really tall tree, but I do want that contrast. And I think just in here as well, just layering that tree and starting to fill in a bit of this space. Here as well. Hold it a little bit time. Ooh, it's that's current. This is good. Everyone keeping up okay today? Let me know how you're doing. And then see as you start to put in your trees that are a bit lower, you can decide. Again, if you need to put in one, I feel like right in here, it would be great to fill in. Maybe here, just to fill in that bottom area. So you don't want a bold line across the bottom. You can put in smaller trees. That helps to fill in that space um, with still some interest because the paint's gray, depending on how much water is on your brush or how wet your paper is, um, will change. So you can put a taller one up here. And again, you can see there's a little bit of space still coming through, which is nice. So we can see the sky. And this one maybe make it a little bit fuller. So these ones actually look like they're stars on top of my trees now they're drying. You're going to see actually, we probably will get the blow dryer to them and see if I can clean them up a tiny bit. Okay, so looking at it, I feel like right in here, I really love the brightness here, but I do want there to be a few shorter trees in front here, which I think will be nice here as well. Want one more there. No, I think that's good. Go back to this area where it's dry. And just the tops. And at this point, I can go in and sort of see where I need to fill in just by the tape line a tiny bit. But I would even let it dry fully and then decide if I want to put in um, a little bit more forest, a little bit more trees. I can see there's some areas here, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> where I can fill in a little bit just by wiggling my brush around to make sure my tape, so we can do the big reveal. Okay, I'm going to hit um, this area here with my heat. just so I can clean up this part that started to blend wet on wet. So again, I'm just going to make them taller. So we're doing a little bit of damage control here. Hopefully by the time I'm done, you won't even have noticed that it was blending. And because it's nice and dry, it'll give me a beautiful contrast against that sky, which I think is beautiful. Add a tiny bit of paint of water to the paint spray because I don't want it to be too loose. So again, see if you if something happens where maybe again 
there's a little bit of an area that you didn't intend, you can cover it up, not to worry. And again, we'll do the same thing to this one, nice and tall. We're gonna try to balance them. So I do have a heavy spot here, but again, I'm just gonna go with it. So my paint gray is a little bit lighter than I want it to be. So I'll go ahead and take a moment to spend some more and look at the screen. And I might even make this tree taller. Now that I have um, increased the height of these two main trees, I can look at my trees to see if they're balanced, if I can add just a little bit more interest in other parts. There we go. Nice, large trees that are close. So I think this one here needs to be a little bit taller. So again, just back and forth. So again, if you start a little bit lighter, less dense, then you can always add. It's still kind of wet. Let's go ahead and give him another level of personality. Okay, what do we think? Oh, I'm quite pleased with it actually. I think that my forest is nice and full enough. I'm gonna see how everyone's doing. Any questions? Okay, You're good for time. This is awesome. So I think it's time to add some of our, ooh, actually I'm gonna take one more second. Sorry, one thing caught my eye when I looked at the screen. Just in here, I feel like this, this one needs to come out a little bit more. And maybe even overlap. Let's let these two come together so they can stand tall together. There we go. Okay, that feels better to me. So make sure your brush is nice and clean. Both of my water jars um, have quite a bit of color in them. So I'm just going to make sure that my Number four is nice and clean. I'll give my Windsor Newton ink a little shake. And sometimes I like to even just use the cap to um, take some of the pigment with me. But I think what I'll do is go ahead and just write in, let's be bold. And if you want to cover your trees so you don't get splatter on your trees, you can use your hand and just tap the brush using your finger to get some really nice star effect on your piece. Run it down as well. And don't be afraid of the larger spots because we're actually going to go ahead and accentuate those ones. Nice and splatter. So by putting my hand in front of the trees, it's actually not going on top of the trees, which is neat. Let me go ahead and give you a nice up close. And then what I like to do is the larger um, circles or the larger splatters, I like to take my number four, I'm just wiping it off a little bit because I did get quite a bit of paint on it and just like to extend them. So I almost like to turn them into larger stars. And because they've fallen randomly, um, it'll feel a little bit more natural. So just extending them a slight bit. And when everything's dry, you can even add a little bit more splatter. Maybe even up here, would be a nice contrast. And not a ton, just a few, again, to make it look really nice. Ooh, I'm happy with that amount of splatter. It does go everywhere. You can see that it even went into my paint well there. So with the uh, Winsor Newton ink, just make sure you wash your brush off. I'm just swirling it into my water jar. You can probably hear it. And I like to dry it off a slight bit um, to make sure that we wash it off completely from the brush. Peggy, just something I want to relay. Someone asked in the chat just now if they can use white gouache. And the answer is yes, you yeah, can use absolutely. white gouache, but we chose to use ink because it's very easily found in the uh, Michael stores, whereas yeah. the gouache is only on michaels.com. And if you haven't played with the ink, I'm sure you'll find lots of uses for it. Like I said, I've used it for lettering too, which is amazing. And um, it's a bit more opaque. So I really like when it dries, it's still a really nice, strong, opaque white, which is neat. Okay, I don't think I need to use the blow dryer. I'm gonna do the tape pull. Are we ready for the tape pull? This is like the best part. 
So that nice clean edge. And like I said, every time I paint these, they just come out a little bit different and it's neat to watch how everything blends together and comes to life. So if your piece is still wet, I would wait maybe a little bit before you remove the tape and always pull parallel to your page. So I'm not pulling up, I'm pulling parallel to my page so that you can see that. Forward. And there you are. How can that you is like that? a that's like a postcard right there. <laughs> so good. And again, remember Perfect. the contrast. So your lightest areas in contrast with your paints gray and that aqua green. I just I don't know. I'm in love. When I, when Tim sent it, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to play around with it more. <laughs> okay. Anybody um, have questions? Since we have time, this is awesome. I hope it wasn't too fast paced. Um, I feel like maybe this was a little bit more easy for you to paint along. And again, like the blooms, sometimes people are afraid of the blooms with watercolor. These are the blooms here. Look at how gorgeous they are as it's starting to dry and blend together. Look at the character and personality in that sky. I think when you when you splatter the white ink on there, that was the moment it like popped. It made all the other colors just seem brighter from, from my perspective on the screen here. Looks great that. Yeah. Awesome. And again, I will let it dry completely and decide if I want to add maybe a little bit more of that dark paints gray. It doesn't show on camera as much, but um, yeah, I think that. And I love the aqua green again with the paints gray just in there. It almost turns into like an indigo. Beautiful. Okay. Did have some color sneak under the tape. How can I fix that? It, when you apply the tape, just really push down, um, depending on what tape you're using to make sure that it has a really good um, adhesion to your paper. And that should hopefully help. And try not to push your brush too much close to the, or not um, sort of the direction of the tape. If you're working close to the tape, then have your brush um, move upwards. So from the tape upwards, and then the paper will absorb it again with cotton paper that um, will help as well. Any other options for the stars? So white gouache, um, you can use white acrylic paint. Windsor Newton also has a great line of acrylic that I use um, available at Michael's. And um, again, the Windsor Newton white ink. If you have the, those three options, hopefully that will help. Um, just looking at the chat. Yay, do you guys wanna show me yours? Can we do a gallery view? And um, we can take a little screenshot. I would love to see what you painted along with me. Yeah, gel pen would work too, actually. Wait till your piece is completely dry and gel pen would be amazing. Just looking at the chats again. Um, yeah, it looks like- Good job, everyone, wow. Amazing, okay. So maybe we can do the, um, hold up our pieces. I'll hold up mine too. So anyone who is on, has their camera on, I'm going to see if I can do gallery view. If you can hold, oh, look at them all, amazing. Hopefully everyone has the same view that I have, but I'm gonna do a little screenshot. So just so you know, I am taking a photo in three. I'll do a three, two, one countdown. Oh, I see Mariah there, Mariah. <laughs> Ready everyone, one, two, three. I'm gonna do a little screenshot. Amazing, amazing. I would definitely say to everyone, great work on here. And if you want, you know, make sure you put the hashtags on there. And you never know, we could be featured on one of Michael's emails or in their maker gallery. So that'd be great. Yeah. And I love everybody's looks so different. Well. There'd be so many different ones that could show up on their, their site. Be great. Yeah. Look at this one, Linda. Yours looks amazing as I'm holding them up. Miriam, amazing. Sheila, oh, Joanne, they look so good. Hey. And again, look at how different they are. So following along just the steps and letting your paint flow. Really, Rebecca, it looks awesome, really makes a difference. So yeah, if you're sharing, tag me. I would love to reshare and have a closer look. Thank you again, Windsor Newton and Michaels for hosting today. What a great opportunity to paint together. It's been fun. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you for being with us.